Nina is 10 years old. Because of the war in her country, her family lost the ability to earn an income and has been relying on food assistance to survive. This has given them just enough to eat, but they have been informed that their rations will now be cut. Soaring inflation has meant that even basic foods like bread are becoming too expensive. At school, Nina is told that instead of getting five meals a week, she will now only get two. Nina is worried. Her parents get easily angry at each other and often at her. She feels lightheaded when doing chores and has trouble concentrating in class. Her parents tell her they need to move to another city to find work and she will have to live with her auntie and take care of her younger siblings. Nina will have to leave school and spend most of her day finding food and collecting firewood. She hears that other girls and women are harassed when they collect firewood and some are even attacked. Nina is frightened. What Nina's all too familiar story illustrates is just how closely intertwined food security and child protection risks are. There is therefore enormous potential for these two sectors to work closely together to better protect children. This short video highlights some of the ways in which we can do this. This video is part of a series exploring the minimum standards for child protection in humanitarian action or CPMS, which are key for all humanitarians as we work to fulfill our duties towards children. In this video, we look at Standard 21, Food Security and Child Protection. The importance of collaboration between child protection and food security cannot be overestimated. For instance, jointly planned programs in the same locations can help mitigate the impact of food insecurity on children's protection. Moreover, working together to develop joint targeting criteria is a huge step towards streamlining processes and ensuring no child slips through the gaps. Developing referral mechanisms and training food security actors on the identification and subsequent referral of child protection cases is equally crucial. In Syria, the World Food Programme has carried out one such experience. With field colleagues, we've uh, all realized that, that the phenomenon of uh, uh, child uh, labor was particularly evident in areas uh, close to our programs, for example, where we distribute uh, uh, food assistance. Having observed that in, in the field, we studied the uh, phenomenon and we reached out to uh, child practitioners, especially to agencies like uh, UNICEF in uh, the country, and we realized that WFP staff uh, lacked uh, the necessary capacities to identify potential child protection cases and did not have capacities of acting upon them. What we did, we started um, with trainings and uh, to sensitize our staff about the overall issue of child labor within the child protection domain. We developed uh, uh, very basic uh, guidelines where it was explained to food experts what child labor is and how to identify cases of child labor. We delivered uh, trainings uh, on the job accompaniment and we started identifying cases and uh, uh, conducted the uh, uh, rapid assessments as well um, in the field. And there was um, uh, a clear uh, link between food insecurity and child labor. We are now empowered to refer those cases to um, child protection practitioners and they can take action and can also uh, respond to this case. This type of collaboration works both ways. Child protection actors are well placed to observe and refer children and families who are struggling to feed themselves. In addition to that, the integration of children's voices and perspectives in assessments and monitoring allows food security staff to achieve their goals based on children's feedback. Supporting food insecure households with family strengthening interventions like positive parenting can reduce risks of physical and emotional violence in the home and improve relationships between caregivers and children. These are just some examples of collaboration between food security and child protection. But it is equally important to identify where things go wrong. Documenting and addressing any unintended 
negative consequences of food security interventions on children's safety and well-being and vice versa. Plan International Malawi addressed this type of negative consequences in a food security program in Desleka Refugee Camp. A joint assessment mission was carried out to assess the child protection risks that are associated with our food security. Uh, we had children that were queuing for long hours uh, to receive food. We also had uh, children that were skipping school just to queue on the food distribution. And uh, we also identified that uh, due to food insecurity, there were negative coping mechanisms among its children. For instance, children going around begging for food, uh, children looking for food in the dumping site, and some children were even uh, involved in child labor. So jointly as our uh, implementing partners, we were able to come up with our uh, mitigation measures. We trained food distribution uh, facilitators on child protection so that they assist in identifying uh, child protection risks children that were queuing to get food were referred to foster care and uh, these foster care parents were given referral letters to receive food on behalf of children but we also ensured that uh, jointly we identify any subsequent uh, child protection risks and address them together after the joint assessment uh, we were able to identify solutions to the multi-sectoral child protection uh, issues that were identified the CPMS Standard 21 outlines a systematic integrated approach between the food security and child protection sectors that is based on coordination and complementarity. Nina goes with her parents to collect this month's food ration at the distribution. Nina sees a child-friendly help desk and meets a woman named Aliyah. Aliyah has received training from a local child protection organization and is able to identify and refer vulnerable children. Aliyah explains that the help desk is a place for children and adults to ask for information, seek help, and to share feedback. After Nina and her parents speak with Aliyah, Aliyah connects them with a humanitarian organization that is providing vulnerable families with cash assistance to meet their food needs. A caseworker follows up with Nina and her family. Nina's parents join a positive parenting program, which helps them to better manage their stress and create a safe and healthy home environment for Nina and her siblings. By strategically collaborating across sectors, by investing in training, we can better achieve our programmatic goals and change the lives and futures of children and their families in humanitarian crisis. The rewards are life-changing. Learn more by visiting the website of the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action, the global interagency network that promotes the protection and well-being of children in humanitarian settings.